The gospel lesson for today is from the sixth chapter of the gospel according to John. And it starts at verse 35, verses 35 through 38. I'm going to read to you from the message translation. <clears throat> Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The person who aligns with me hungers no more and thirsts no more. Not ever. I have told you this explicitly because even though you have seen me in action, you don't really believe me. Every person the Father gives me eventually comes running to me. And once that person is with me, I hold on and I don't let go. I came down from heaven not to follow my own whim, but to accomplish the will of the one who sent me. Here ends the gospel. I heard this story uh, from a psychotherapist. Uh, this person had a young man come to practice for counseling that had bone cancer. And his leg was removed at the hip in order to save his life. He was 24 years old. And when the therapist started working with him, he was very, a very angry young man, as you can well imagine. He thought that he had suffered this terrible loss so early in life, and what was fair about that? The therapist said he worked with this man through grief and rage and pain and used painting and imagery and deep psychotherapy. And after working with him for more than two years, there became a profound shift. He began coming out of himself. Later, he started to visit other people who had suffered severe physical losses, and he would tell me the most wonderful stories about his visits. Once he visited a young woman who was almost his own age, it was a hot day in Palo Alto, and he was run in running shorts, so his artificial legs showed when he came into her hospital room. The woman was so depressed about the loss of both her breasts that she couldn't even look at him, wouldn't pay attention to him. The nurses had left her radio playing, probably in order to cheer her up. Desperate to get her attention, he unstrapped his leg and began dancing around the room on one leg, snapping his fingers to the music. She looked at him in amazement and then burst out laughing and said, Man, if you can dance, I can sing. A year later, we sat down to review our work together, said the therapist, and he talked about what was significant to him. And then I went into his file and I took out some of the pictures he had drawn early on for me. I suggest... I suggested to him at the time that he draw a picture of his body. And he had drawn a picture of a vase, and running through the vase was a deep black crack. This was the image of his body. And he had taken a black crayon and drawn the crack over and over again. He was grinding his teeth at the time with rage. It was very, very painful, because it seemed to him that the vase would never function as a vase again. It would never hold water. And now, years later, he came to this picture and looked at it and said, oh, this one isn't finished. And the therapist said, extending the box of crayons, why don't you finish it? He picked up a yellow crayon and putting his finger on the crack, he said, you see here where it is broken. This is where the light comes through. And with the yellow crayon, he drew light streaming through the crack in his body. He was strong now, more understanding because of his broken places. Well, that's one story. And it's a good story. And I want you to look at another story that's in your song sheet. It's a story made by Norman Rockwell in the picture of the Thanksgiving supper. Now, you have seen this, most of you have seen this picture many times. It's actually a picture of one of the four freedoms. And uh, Rockwell drew those four pictures. This one is the freedom from want. Um, this is the ideal American family, isn't it? I think for many of us, especially those uh, older ones of us, or those, many of you who have been involved in art and uh, most of your life, you know Rockwell's work, and this is one of his more famous paintings. And so look at the painting and how happy everyone is. Beautiful table, all the food you can imagine. And um, when you think of your family gathering together and you're getting ready for Thanksgiving, it's hard to imagine it could turn out any better for you and for your family than Rockwell paints it here. I think this is the image most of us have, isn't it? No, I don't think so. I think it needs a touch of reality, you know? And so when you look at that picture, pick one person uh, 
for instance, who may have just been laid off from a lucrative job and is wondering how he or she are going to make the payments on the house and the cars. One person could be like that at that table. Or pick one person to be an alcoholic. The averages in our society say that in a group that big, there must be one person who has trouble with alcohol or substance abuse. So that person's sitting at the table too. And uh, the children are not prominent in this picture, but there's a hint that children are there. And maybe there's a child there with learning disabilities who's struggling in school, and parents are anxious about it. And it's always on their mind, even when they sit down at the Thanksgiving table. And maybe there are a couple of people there who have just gotten pacemakers. We know people in the congregation who have them. Bob and Shirley have so much togetherness, they got pacemakers together. Bob told me when they get excited about one another, the garage door opens. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bob, that was a cheap joke, but I, I had to use it. I just had to use it. When the sound system doesn't work, Gil blames it on my pacemaker, and I don't even have one, so. We could even imagine in this picture the young man with one leg and the young woman after breast surgery sitting at the Thanksgiving table. And maybe this would be their first Thanksgiving after these radical changes in their lives have happened. Now, if you put that on Rockwell's picture, does it change the picture for you? It's not the perfect table anymore, is it? But it's the way most tables are. In scripture, Jesus is often found at a banquet table. He doesn't seem to ever miss a banquet. And there is where he does his teaching and where he also enjoys the company of his disciples and sometimes even has to uh, answer tough questions. But the faith that he teaches was never meant for a perfect table or for perfect people or for a perfect church. He even calls himself the bread of life, the wonderful image. Now, I don't know if you are like me, but the smell of fresh bread, oh, unbelievable. And quite frankly, I've chosen to go to restaurants where I know the bread is really good. Some of you want to stay away from bread. Most of us probably should to some extent. But I cannot pass up bread. It complements food so very well. And even with peanut butter and jelly on it, bread is wonderful. Wonderful. 